As Nigeria's economy continues to grow, many investors are seeking opportunities to expand their businesses and secure their financial future in the United States. However, navigating the U.S. immigration system can be daunting. In this interview, we'll delve into the eligibility requirements, benefits and challenges of U.S. permanent residency for Nigerian investors. We'll also discuss the EB-5 visa program, E2 Treaty Investor Visa, and other relevant options. Today, we are being joined by Fifel Mi Banks, is the chair invest in the USA, that is IRUSA Nigeria Forum, and managing partner, CEO, Brave Icons Global. Thank you so much for joining us and having us, because you're the one having us, yeah. actually. <laughs> it's a pleasure being here. Thank All right. you for having me. Thank you. So what are the eligibility requirements for Nigerian investors to obtain U.S. residency, you know, permanent residency? Thank you very much. That's quite a brilliant question. And it's not specific to Nigerian investors. It's actually mm -hmm. global in nature in the sense that if you are a non-U.S. investor, mm -hmm. it's the same eligibility requirement. It's not different, you know, for Indians as it is for Chinese or for as long as you're a non-U.S. investor seeking permanent residence in the United States, these are the things that you must provide. Particularly if you're going through the EB-5 program, which is the Investors Immigration Program, mm. you have to have um, a particular amount. I'm going to mention the amount, but I don't want to start with that because usually people are like, no, once they hear that, they don't want to hear anything else. Yeah. Right. But as the investor, which could either be the patriarch, that is the man of the house, or it could be the matriarch, you know, it doesn't matter. Somebody can be the primary applicant. Mm -hmm. It could be the wife. It could be the husband, right? Now, you, the primary investor, your spouse, and all your children that are under 21 qualify, you know, to apply together as a family, mm -hmm. all right? Now, the capital required um, is in two folds, actually. But typically, we talk to people about the second one, which is like, you know, the cheaper option. And it is 800,000 US dollars. Okay. Now, bear in mind, you don't lose your money. Okay. As a matter of fact, it's technically free because you get your entire money back after the term, you know, of this investment. Okay. And you get annual return on investment, right? But where do the 800,000 come from? Um, it's not the fabrication of myself or anybody in the industry. Uh, this program actually got started by an act of the U.S. Congress in the year 1990. And at the initial stage, the capital requirement was 150000 in 1990. And at some point, it moved on to $500,000. Um, under Trump 1.0, it went up to about 900000 And with Biden, you know, it now has two categories. The number one category is actually a million and fifty thousand dollars, right? And then there is the eight hundred thousand dollar option. What's the difference? The difference essentially is in the location the project, you know, is within the United States of America because um, there are building codes, you know, depending on cities, and some areas have been designated as targeted employment areas which means that we want more jobs to be created in this place. And so any project you situate here, for the Nigerian investor who wants to invest and use that as a vehicle, they would need $800,000. But okay. if the location is not a targeted employment area, mm -hmm. then they will have to part with a million and 50,000. Now, it doesn't matter what you part with. You get your money back. Mm. All right. <laughs> Emphasis on getting the money back. Yes. But I mean, I like to, can, to say Can that somebody part. actually quickly check what 800000 I can US tell you what it is, is? today. Please. What's, what, what is <laughs> that it? That would be about a 1 billion, 700 million, 1.7 billion. All right. Yeah, because interestingly and sadly so, as of today, the dollar is about 1750 mm -hmm. which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's look at the benefits because after I drop my one billion, let's leave the USD almost two now. Billion. Okay, almost two billion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's look at the benefits of having to obtain this US, you know, re permanent residency because people would like to know what they actually stand to gain right. after putting so much money. Sure. Yeah. Um, again, let me say that you're not putting so much money to lose investing. It. Right. Sure. Exactly, investing right. the money, and so there are two classes of benefit. There is the investment benefit. There is the immigration benefit and of course that is laced with other you know underlying benefit so the investment benefit is depending on the regional center you invest with 
And this is why we advise you know, our clients and Nigerian investors to speak to people like us who are, I'm a USCIS you know, certified promoter. Mm -hmm. And I also you know, partner with a lot of regional centers. And I represent you know, the investor in the USA in Nigeria. So I am very well grounded within the EB-5 space. I mean, I'm a known face right. you know, um, across the world for mm -hmm. that. Now, depending on who you choose to invest with, because you know, the viability of their project also matters, right? Um, so a project can return, I want to use financial terms, but I won't use that because we're speaking to you know, everybody, right? right? Uh, so instead of saying business point and all of that, a project can return, say, 5% per annum. Another project can return 10% per annum. A typical Nigerian investor wants to go for the 10%. Mm -hmm. And I'm always like, well, it's not about the returns per se, even though the Nigerian investor is very sensitive to his or her returns, right. right? So, yes, there is that annual returns that you get on that money. And then let's look at the immigration benefit because mm -hmm. this program was actually created, you know, to give opportunity to non-U.S. investors to get lots of permanent residency and a pathway to U.S. citizenship. That's why it was created. It's never about the money, to be honest, right? Now, when you invest, what you then do is that we hire, we have, you know, I have a consortium that we work together. After the money has been wired to the regional center, the immigration attorney kickstart his own work mm -hmm. by filing a petition called the I-529E, you know, to the USCIS. USCIS is the United States Citizenship and immigration service they are the ones you know in fact even the u.s embassy mm -hmm. you know works under the uscis right so they are the ones that would adjudicate which means that they, they would evaluate this petition to say okay yeah two things they will be checking for basically number one has the investor really wired their money and is their money at risk now every time you use the word at risk the investor is saying hey my money is gone <laughs> right no it means now that your money is being put to use mm. and you know if you understand business any money that is being put to use that is not lying in the bank is at risk because you can lose the money yeah. right mm -hmm. and in fact because of the security and exchange commission's uh, governance codes in the united states the regional center cannot come and give you a guarantee the kind of guarantee that i can give you as a promoter to say mm -hmm. oh, you're not going to lose your money they are not allowed to say that mm -hmm. because you know it's, it's an investment and every investment bears its own risk right so now, once USCIS verifies that, okay, your money has already been wired, it's being used, the second thing we want to look for is what's the source of this money? Where did this money come from? Once, you know, they're able to establish that, and of course, before we even put in your petition, we would have done our own due diligence and help you to structure to ensure that the possibility of getting what is called an RFE, you know, is to the barest minimum. What's an RFE? An RFE Essential is an acronym that means request for further evidence, all right? Because if the person that's educating the petition, right, is not convinced that, okay, this person, how did you move from one million mm -hmm. to one, I mean, how do you do that? Come and explain. They're going to request for further evidence, and then we can provide. But from experience, I think we've only had maybe two out of the many people that we've helped, you know, during this process um, who the USCIS has said, okay, can we have further evidence? Yes. Yeah, so now the petition goes in, you get approval. Mm -hmm. The approval essentially is your green card. Now, what is a green card? Because I see there are a lot of things that are Narratives you know, you know, being interchanged that people mm -hmm. don't understand what it means. Mm -hmm. Your green card is your lawful permanent residency card. Mm -hmm. So it means the same thing. An LPR green card Permanent residence in the United States. Because the only way we know you're a permanent resident is to ask, where's your green card, mm. right? Now, the green card you get for the first approval is a two-year conditional green card. Okay. All right? Um, at the expiration of that, as a matter of fact, 90 days to the expiration, we need to do another filing asking the USCIS to remove the conditions. All right? And so you are issued... Now a green card that is quote and unquote unlimited, unlimited in the sense that now you can keep renewing this every 10 years for the rest of your life, if you will, mm -hmm. or when you have fulfilled the requirement of 
having resided at least five years within the United States, you can then apply for citizenship. Right. And you see, that's why this is like one of the fastest routes, mm -hmm. you know, for those who can afford it mm -hmm. to get their entire family, you know, not only to lawful permanent residence in the United States, but also, you know, to become full citizens. Now, as a lawful permanent resident, mm -hmm. the benefit you get is the only thing you can do, you know, is you can't vote and be voted for as a mm. citizen, right? But as a lawful permanent resident, you get the same kind of payment, you know, that citizens pay in terms of education. So your children will go to school in the U.S. as permanent residents, and they're not paying international fees. Mm. You get to save, you know, on school fees, right? As a permanent resident, you can leave work, do business anywhere within the continental United States, right? Mm -hmm. You can, of course, you know the U.S. economy is vibrant in the sense that once you start business, you have access to all manner of support, of including funding, right? So, and till tomorrow, the U.S. still represents, you know, one of the safest nations. I know there are pockets and flashes of insecurity mm -hmm. everywhere in the world, right? But the U.S. remains the premier destination you know, for anybody who wants to add a second, you know, citizenship, you know, to, mm -hmm. to their portfolio. Yeah. All right. I hear you. Thank you for that. Now, how long does all of these processes and benefits take? And we're looking at for Nigerian investors now and not, you know, internationally. Yeah. How long does and it take? That's a brilliant way to put it because internationally, yeah. Nigeria is actually favored. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Um, if a Chinese investor, an Indian investor puts in for EB-5 today, the earliest they can get any response from USCIS is in seven years' time because they have a lot of backlog. Okay. Fortunately, Nigeria does not have that backlog, which could also mean that Nigeria doesn't have a lot of rich people, right? <laughs> <laughs> but before April 2022, mm -hmm. the response time from USCIS was a bit, you know, it could take two years, two and a half years, three years. But April 2022, there was a new legislation called the Reform and Integrity Act, which really sought to sanitize the EB-5 industry. And alongside that is the fact that the USCIS is now encouraged, you know, mm -hmm. to respond faster. Mm -hmm. What we've seen this year, 2024, is that we are getting response from USCIS within nine months. Um, in fact, this year we've gotten response in six months, mm. which is a significant improvement, yeah. you know, in their processing, mm -hmm. right? So. A typical Nigerian investor who invests now can expect to get an approval for their high five to Nike within one year. But I would typically tell clients that, okay, let's take the worst case scenario. Mm. 18 months, you know. But of course, like I said, this year has been very expedited. All right. So yeah. how you spoke about now, we're actually focusing on the EB5. EB5 because yeah. you said that's where, you know, you're mostly um, centered on. So... Yeah. For source approval of source of funds, take us through the processes. How is it done? Do they, you know, what they have to do, how long it has to take, and all of that? Okay, so every investor is unique. Every family is unique. Mm -hmm. And um, what that means also is that their financial dynamics will be right. unique, right? Mm -hmm. um, but just to give you, like, an, a strategic overview, okay. you know, um, again, because all of these transactions are highly confidential, mm -hmm. right? Um, so take, for instance, you have a family that has been a business owner for well over three decades and it's been a generation of business owners. Mm -hmm. And so they are loaded, right? But the current family that is really eligible in terms of their children being under 21 and everything is a third generation of that family. Right. This individual, his own spouse, may not have a million dollars as discretionary mm -hmm. funding, right? So they can get a gift from their father you know, and who gives a son, you know, this gift and say, hey, I'm going to wire this money, whatever you want to do with it. it I mean, it's a gift. Mm -hmm. And this person used that gift because the requirement, you know, for USCIS means that you can get this money either by virtue of having worked for it, your investment. Mm -hmm. It could be a gift. And guess what? It can even be a loan. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it can be a loan because, I mean, you must have securitized the loan and giving some sort of collateral, mm. you know, before you can obtain mm -hmm. that loan. Yeah, so, right. but we've seen inheritances, and we've also worked with people who have built wealth, you know, over time. All right, you've done justice to the EB-5 visa program. Now, let's look at all the categories. We have the 
E2 visa and the L1 visa. So briefly tell us, what are these categories? The E2 visa is actually a pathway for countries that have a treaty, you know, treaty with the United States. Um, Nigeria is not one of such countries. Okay. Uh, but what we've seen is that Nigerians would go get, let's say, a St. Kitts and Nevis or a Grenada visa. And those countries, you know, um, have a treaty with the United States. And so they can use their passport to get an E2 visa. Although that is being reviewed, you know, and because now the new law says if you get a Grenada passport, you must demonstrate that you've lived in Grenada for two years before mm. you approach the U.S. to get, you know, so people are like backtracking to say, hey, maybe this is not working after all. Mm -hmm. um, the L1 visa is different. And may I say that there are generally two categories of visa. Um, there is the immigrant visa and then there is the migrant visa. All right? Immigrant means that I have an intention to live fairly permanently in this new nation. All right, and that's what the EB-5 is. That's also what the E-2 is, right? Mm -hmm. The L-1, on the other hand, is actually a migrant visa, um, which is typically given to executives of U.S. organizations that have branches abroad, okay? But it's not just any Tom, Dick, and Harry. You must have been a manager, an executive in a U.S. organization that has, you know, a representation abroad, and you must have done that for at least a year before the organization will then apply on your behalf, you know, to USCIS to say, hey, this person is very instrumental to our operations and we need to bring them into the United States. Um, the L1 visa is typically issued maybe between three months and sometimes mm -hmm. five years. Okay. okay. And when it expires, all you do is get to renew it. And I think you can only renew it for once. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't lead anywhere. There are other categories of visa. Um, in fact, there is the O visa, which is the entrepreneur's visa, which is a dual intent visa. What that means is that it starts as a migrant visa, but you can change your mind to say, hey, I want to just stay permanently in the U.S. Mm. Having done this business, I realize this is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, but essentially there are two categories, immigrant and then migrant. So the hell uh -huh. one is for executives of U.S. organizations abroad who the organization would, you know, invite into the U.S. The mm. E2 is for countries that have a treaty with the United States, yes. All but right. Nigeria doesn't have a treaty with the United States in terms of immigration. Okay, so let's go back to the e, um, EB-5. Right. So let's look at the tax implication. And I'm asking this because of the source of funds. Right. So are there tax implications for investors who require permanent residence in the U.S.? Okay, I like this question. And um, a typical Nigerian, you know, doesn't want to pay tax, mm -hmm. right? You've got to pay tax, you know, um, and you would be inspired to pay tax in, you know, a developed nation like America where mm -hmm. things are working. You can see, you know, the benefit of the tax that you're paying. But you don't get to pay tax on that investment. Okay. All right? You pay tax on the appreciation, which is the interest, you know, that you earn on that investment. Mm -hmm. So let me break it down. You wire $800,000 for the purpose of applying for EB-5 visa. At the expiration of that investment term, you get $800,000 back. Are you getting my point? Mm -hmm. But you know that you get return on investment on an annual basis. What is 5% of $800,000? That would be about $40,000. On that $40,000, of course, we are going to remove our tax, mm -hmm. says the United States IRS. So you can eventually maybe get maybe $32,000 mm -hmm. you know, on your money because that interest is and within the United States. Right. And, you know, the way the tax laws are is that if you do any business within the U.S., yes, you would have to pay tax. And as an American, even if you do business outside of the U.S., you know, you still have to pay personal income tax. All right. So let's look at dual citizenship with the U.S. permanent residency. How does that work? And Nigerian investors actually maintain having a dual citizenship and the permanent residency. Absolutely. A lot of people, you know, in Nigeria have dual citizenship. Okay. Um, a lot of people that you know and some that you don't know, right? Right. Um, because Nigeria permits dual citizenship, so also does America permit dual citizenship. Matter of fact, a lot of Americans also, because again, migration is a human thing, all right? And global mobility is also a human thing. So mm -hmm. people, people take second citizenship for different reasons, 
beyond even migration and mobility. Sometimes, you know, you just want to give the future generation some sort of leverage. Mm. Sometimes you want to be able to do business, you know, um, at a much higher level than you could have been able to do in your own home country, right? So there are different reasons for which people do these things. Um, so would you be able to hold second citizenship as a Nigeria? The answer is yes. A lot of people do it anyway. So you're not going to be the first. And are you going to be the hundredth? You're not going to be the one thousandth. It probably won't be the 2,000. There are a lot of, you know, um, Nigerians that hold dual citizenship. All right. So yeah. more on the EB-5. Do you have any other information that you think, you know, people who are interested in being investors in the U.S. would like to know? Absolutely. Um, you mean within the EB-5 space? Yes. Yes. Um, so apart from the basics, you know, it's for people to realize that the choice of project matters. Um, because interestingly, this year, June, um, a federal high court sitting in Lagos, you know, actually convicted an American mm. who defrauded Nigerians, yep. you know, they had it more. I don't know if you were yes. aware, right, um, the guy is something Ramirez, yeah. you know, I think it's Spanish-American. Spanish yeah, yeah uh, is that there's a lot of misinformation within this industry. And I've also seen that in Nigeria, you know, and by virtue of my responsibility as assignment as the chair of Invest in the USA, I am meant to not clamp down, you know, on such practices, but open the eyes of Nigerian investors to the accurate and adequate information for them to make informed decisions about their EB-5 move. Because people are, you know, just giving things that are, have nothing to do with EB-5. I've heard people say, oh, you can pay 40000 first. I've heard people say, oh, it's 250000 I have my own. You, you are not the one who determines that. It's the U.S. government that specify this is the actual amount, right? So um, I would want people to be careful about who they are dealing with. I want people to be very well informed about the choice of project. I've mentioned choice of project. I've said it many times. People need to understand where does the money go, right? Um, when you invest in the U.S. for the purpose of EB-5, you don't just invest in any company in America. America has millions and millions of companies. Um, can you just say, oh, I like Apple? Let me put it at 100,000, then go and apply. You will not get any EB-5 visa. They are designated companies. Most of them are within the real estate construction space, building five-star hotels, building multifamily houses, doing redevelopment of cities, building infrastructure. You know, but there are other people also in different industries, logistics. Um, we even have a regional center that's into coffee. Some people are into electric vehicle manufacturing. So, and then, you know, I've dealt with Nigerian investors who will say to me, hey, I want to invest in New York. I'm like, with EB-5, it really doesn't matter. It's mm. not about the location, all right? It is about, is this a reputable, you know, regional center who have a demonstrated record of giving investors their money back, mm. all right? Because now that I'm in Nigeria with this interview, I can say something. There are regional centers out there who have history of default. You know, some who even want us to work with them, and I have to tell them point blank that, you know what, I mean, there's a lot of money back home. I cannot, you know, represent you because I have done my due diligence, all right? And that's what I do for investors. Every year, you know, I, I take a delegation to the U.S., sometimes they're investors, to go see the project for themselves, to do due diligence on the company. It is one thing that they have been designated a regional center by USCIS. It's another thing to look at the viability of the actual project. It's another thing to look at the management team. It's another thing to look at the structure, all right? Because companies are structured differently. Some have development companies. They have investment companies that would finance the development company to build, right? So the money goes to the investment company, and then that investment company loans money to the development company. You need to see how they are integrated, you know, and what have been the history, you know, with EB-5. Those are some of, you know, the issues. And I can go on and on um, because I, I enjoy cross-border investment facilitation. I only don't take investors, you know, out of Nigeria. I also bring investment from the United States to, for Nigerian companies. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Refer Banks. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. You're welcome. And it's great to be here. Yeah. All right, there you have it. Everything you need to know about Nigerian investors who are willing to, you know, invest in the U.S. permanent residency. My name is Deborah Eze. To get a scoop of this interview, visit our website and also follow us across all our social media platforms. Until next time, it's bye for now.